this video, I'm going to look into the do-it-yourself construction of a sand heat storage battery. And in this case, I'll be using a solar photovoltaic panel for the power. And so I'll get right into it now. This is a solar panel I'll be using to charge up that thermal dirt battery. I'll take a look at the ratings on the back. Get this to focus. Rated it. 240 watts, short circuit, 8.75 amps, rated current at 8.18 amps. And what I found to be the easiest way, safest way to shut these solar panels off without constantly moving the solar panels is just to cover them up with a old blanket. That's what I'll use. I'll cover it up with the old blanket, then I don't have to keep moving the solar panel around. Kind of got it fixed on the sun with the right angle so it hits it square on. I won't hold the camera up there, it's too bright. But I'll have to make sure I'm not getting any clouds coming through. It's pretty clear skies yet. But hopefully I'll have this ready before any clouds come along. And just to test the panel, I have it shorted through. A meter right here. Shorted amperage is 9.04 amps, so it is putting out quite a bit of power. I like that when you buy something and it actually performs like it's rated. I've had this panel for quite a while and it was a defective one because it's got a bunch of little cracks in, in it. I don't know if you can see this, but I probably have had this panel for about four years and I was just getting credit for it because <laughs> it was defects these cracks in it but it's still performing and that's the one I'll use I guess like it dropped a little bit now it's a little bit cloudy yet here partly cloudy anyway dropped down to nine amps shorted so that's good and I'm putting a thermal heat storage battery together and I just have some wire, resistant wire, strung out in this wooden box. And the ohm reading on this wire is under 4 ohms. This is uh, some kind of resistant wire I got. It's uh, an alloy of nickel. I don't remember what kind it was exactly. I didn't have it labeled except for this, whatever that is, some kind of Chinese writing, if anybody knows. And the sand I'm going to use is this stuff right here. It's a mixture of sand and clay. And I'm going to pack this in around the wires. And that's what's going to heat up. That's going to be the thermal mass. It's not just sand, it's sandy clay. I don't have a real fine sand. A coarse sand isn't real good for thermal conductivity. It almost acts more like insulation. If you've got coarse sand, you need real fine sand for that, but I don't have any. So this is just a mixture of sand and clay. It's kind of like what they call a cob. And it works good for thermal heat storage. And I'm just going to pack this all around this wire. And the wire will heat it up from the power from that solar panel. Well, I'm all set up now. i got the solar panel covered. But even with it covered, I'm still getting a little bit going through there. I have to turn this so you can see it. 0.4 amps. 1.4 volts. That's what they covered up and it's got it hooked up going through our wire. And now I will unveil solar panel. Okay, so that's all free and clear. And we'll see what we got going on over here. Ah, let's see. 26 of my meters are dirty, looks like. 26. Whoops. Knock my clip lead off. Try that again. 
8.25 volts and 8.38 amps. So solar panels putting out pretty good. And now that I got a reading, I'll I think I'll probably cover this up. I'll uh, take temperature measure of this first. I'll probably cover it up. Let it set a while and heat up. I have it more or less directly hooked up now without the amp meter. I'll leave the voltmeter hooked up, but I took the amp meter off because I didn't need that current running through the meter all the time. And I'll check the temperature of this dirt to start with. 49 degrees about, 50, 50, that's 49 on this side, 50, then I'll see, I'll probably come back like in a half hour, I'm going to cover this up with this insulated shirt, and the time right now, get to where you can read it. 135. I'll come back in a half hour and see what it is. Came back out. Sky is partly cloudy. I think we're hitting a little bit of clouds now. The voltage has dropped down. And okay, it's been a half hour. And we'll see what the temperature is on this. So it jumped up. 75 degrees. Oh, okay, that's pretty decent. I think it's probably like 10 to 15 pounds of dirt here. And I'll let it cook yet and come back again. About an hour since last time, it does feel warmer. Definitely feels warmer there. Get to where I can read this. Um, 126... So it is coming up, steaming a little bit. Must have been a little bit of moisture in there yet. I can see it steaming. Well, this solar panel has been on here for about two and a half hours now. I put some insulation in there. This plywood feels warm. I see steaming coming out of there. And we'll just pick this up. You see the steam coming out of there. Fuel's hot. There's the wire. Dug down to the, I see the wire. It's about three, close to 300 degrees down in there more. Hmm. I guess it just needs more insulation around that stuff. It's another day and I'm Going through the experiment again, I made some changes. I made an insulated box for that wooden box. And I still see some steam coming out of there right now. And I keep changing the angle on that uh, solar panel to make sure it's straight on with the sun. And what I have a little bit different, I have a probe thermometer in there right now, just stuck in there. And about 200 and close to 230 degrees, and it's been on here about two hours. Let's see the steam coming out of there. It's the output. So you got about 26.78 volts. Across the resistant wire and 8.56 amps, 7 amps. Going up a little bit. Must be a few clouds coming through there. And lost my probe. So just stick it in there. Hundred and fifty some spots here. Two hundred and eighty of the deeper I go, 
290, 300 degrees. I'm just poking it in right there. 310, 12. I guess I, I can't poke the wire in anymore, but it's been two hours. 317, 18. So it is working. 320. And that's what we're getting out of the solar panel across the wires with the steam coming up there. Probably can't see it too good. Hmm. So I wonder how much this will go up. I guess I'll leave this styrofoam across for a while. I got an aluminum reflective coating on the one side. That insulated box helps quite a bit, I think. The wood will protect the foam here, but I don't know about right here. I'm not sure what temperature that foam can take. It's probably probably getting close if it's 300. Well, I don't think the surface is at. Right. Surface is about 260 right there. I can feel the heat off of it. 220. I'm probably all right for a little while. I'll let it go for a little while yet and then come back and check it. It's been three hours now with the insulated box. And we'll take a look at what we got going on. Uh, this is the output of the solar panel 8.66 amps and a little over 27 volts. That's the temperature of the probe outside right now I'm just sitting the sun was hitting it so it's above freezing but it's actually about 25 degrees outside the box started at 27 degrees three hours ago when I put it on uh, see smoke and steam coming out of there and we'll see what the temperatures are at now uh, Trying to get it in there. Probe is bending. Try that again. And 300. 400 and. Well, it's. 485 degrees, 86. That's just in there. 490. It's probably about as high as I want to get it with the materials that I'm using. Uh, styrofoam doesn't feel like it's melting, but ooh, the wood is hot. Darn near 500 degrees. Hmm. Well, I guess I can understand the potential they have for this way of storing heat. I can see possibilities for it. I have been turning the panel so it keeps facing the sun. I can see we got some clouds coming in now. So I'm probably going to shut this experiment down right now. It's just about 500 degrees. And definitely need an insulated box. Your foam doesn't feel too bad, really. I don't know if it's going to hit that. Yep, there it hit the 500 degree mark. <laughs> so that's three hours of sunshine for that 240 watt panel. Wasn't putting out quite that much. Temperature started at 27 degrees. I stuck the probe in there. It was 27 degrees when I started it. And it's up to 500 degrees right now. So that's pretty interesting. I wasn't positive on exactly what kind of wire I was using with this. It may have just been stainless steel wire. I have used regular steel tie wire for a heating element wire before. 
But this had a little bit more resistance. And then I just cut it off where it looked like I was getting the best output for that uh, solar panel. I did weigh the amount of sandy dirt that was in there and it was 17 pounds. And the total with that wooden box came up to be about 23 pounds. And with pretty much full sun for three hours, that solar panel pumped in about 670 watt hours into that thermal mass or 2,286 BTUs. Now I probably could have had about three times as much sand in there, maybe like 50 pounds that would heat up during the whole course of the day and get it up to that same temperature. And considering the construction of something like this, the amount and kind of insulation you'd want around that dirt would probably depend on the temperature you're trying to get that dirt to. Maybe seven or 800 degrees might be reasonable, but with that you'll need some higher temperature insulation. Maybe something like I use in my rocket stoves. But anyway, this whole experiment kind of gave me ideas of what the possibilities are and how to scale it up. And if you were looking for something like that too, I hope this video helped. So thank you for watching this one, and I'll catch you in the next one.